Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. It is wrong to say that people who suffer from mental illness have a weakness of faith, but it is right to suggest that when they suffer from mental illness, they do find that their sense of connection to Allah might be imposed upon. We are not the ones who are doing the wrong. Now, we have got reason to feel very good about this section because we are talking about the heart, your true self. As you remember, the heart is the part of the mind which you have the most control over. And if you nurture it, you can truly conquer many things and become successful in both this world and religious matters. To look at how the heart helps, again we have a list of R's. Rules, reflections, refuge, ruqya, remembrance and remedy. So let's go through these one by one. Rules are about the rules of conduct. You will remember from the series on akhlaq what the rules of conduct are there for. They're descriptions of how you would like to be. There are also life truths in akhlaq which will be helpful. For example, good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people. And we don't always have an explanation for why life seems unfair. And in terms of your rules of conduct, you may have certain rules that you try to live by. Every day, try to find something to be grateful for. Every day, try to please the people who you love. These small things can help structure your day and give you something to believe in other than that which is consuming you. When you remember Allah, it is more than just by praying dua. It is by giving of yourself entirely to your life. The next thing is reflection. Those who reflect are mentioned many times as being more blessed. What does that really mean though? When you reflect, you are applying yourself deeply to thoughts of Allah. For example, there was a study where people compared those who prayed Salah mechanically versus those who prayed Salah giving deep attention to Allah. Doing that five times a day will help to bring you in proximity to Allah and gives you a sense of comfort. When those two groups of people were compared, it was found that those who applied themselves more to deep thought had a beneficial effect in their mind. Their blood pressure lowered and they seemed to be more kind and cognitively clear afterwards. Reflection outside Salah includes things like Dua and meditation if you feel like it. But really, reflecting on Allah is something we can do all the time. The third one is refuge. Now, the Quran says, And if an evil whisper from shaitan tries to turn you away, then seek refuge in Allah. Verily, he is the all-hearer, the all-knower. One conception of waswas is that they are whispers from shaitan. When we seek refuge in Allah, what we are doing is asking to be within his cloak. The dua that the Quran suggests Detailed here translated is, My Lord, I seek refuge with you from the whisperings and suggestions of the shaitan, and I seek refuge with you, my Lord, lest they may attend or come near me. Remember, these thoughts and temptations, if they can be dismissed with dua, you should be very grateful. But if they don't disappear, do not feel that God has forgotten you. It may be that you are manifesting an illness, in which case dua might help, but you are also commanded by Allah to seek remedy. The fourth element is Rukya, and Rukya is described by the Prophet very beautifully in this terms. Put your hand in the place of pain and say Bismillah three times, and say seven times, I seek refuge with the power and majesty of Allah against what I suffer. Putting your hand in the place of pain in this case would be putting it on your head. Remember, as we said earlier, Think of this issue as outside you, just like a painful knee or a painful arm. Your brain is something that is part of you. It isn't necessarily you. So putting your hand on your brain is a reminder that you are trying to help a part of you to move forward and feel better. The fifth R is remembrance, or in other words, dhikr. Verily, in the name of Allah do hearts find rest. That's the Quran. Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah says, I am as my slave thinks of me, and I am with him if he remembers me. If he remembers me in himself, I too remember him in myself. And if he remembers me in a group of people, I remember him in a group that is better than that. 
and if he comes one span nearer to me, I go one cubit nearer to him, and if he comes one cubit nearer to me, I go a distance of two outstretched arms nearer to him, and if he comes to me walking, I go to him running. In other words, if you try to remember Allah, he will come to you twice or more the distance. He will make it easier the more you remember him. A dua that people often pray for anxiety is quoted by the Prophet ﷺ here. O oh Allah, I am your servant, son of your servant, son of your maid servant. My forelock is in your hand. Your command over me is forever executed and your decree over me is just. I ask you by every name belonging to you, which you named yourself with, or revealed in your book, or you taught to any of your creation, or you have preserved in the knowledge of the unseen with you, that you make the Qur'an the life of my heart and the light of my breast, and a departure from my sorrow and a release for my anxiety. What better than to copy a dua by the Prophet himself? Remember again, to pray dua is informing your heart directly. It is building and strengthening your character and your proximity to Allah. These things in combination with dealing with the nafs and with taking steps to treat a disease can overcome most difficulties that you face mentally. The next R is remedy. I mean kalonji or cumin seed. Abu Huraira is said to say, I heard Allah's Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, There is healing in black cumin for all diseases except death. Now, what does the science say? Science seems to be discovering new things about cumin all the time. One study where people took 500 milligrams, that's half a gram of cumin a day, when they were compared to people who didn't, their cognition, their very thinking improved in three important dimensions. Now, the science might be backing it up, but regardless of the science, as I've said before, faith doesn't need science. Taking kolonji is something that everyone can do when they suffer from anything. That's like a bonus that we can all take. I hope in describing these three ways to deal with obsessions, anxieties and waswas over the last three videos has given you some reassurance and an overview of the many ways in which we can handle issues of the mind and make the mind a more peaceful place. In the next videos, we will explore more specific ways of how to bring peace to the mind. I hope you can hang around. And if you like this video, remember, the more views it has, the more people who can get to see it, because my mission is to give of myself and what I've learned. If this video can help even one person, then I am so thankful to Allah. Please spread the word, please subscribe, and may Allah bring blessing to you, and may Allah bring healing and help to all of us. I look forward to making the next video for you. Ameen. Wassalam.